Hi, this is Terry. I've been maintaining a 180 pound weight loss for over a year with a clean, whole foods, meat focused, low carb, low calorie approach. Today we are doing a meal prep of my breakfast, lunch, and suppers. This is the carnivore version. So you can follow this and have yourself some breakfast, lunch, and suppers based on whatever amounts you choose to eat. So this is 80 20 ground beef and here and 80 20 ground beef it's five pounds and five pounds and now i'm going to add some water i add water because it helps keep it from sticking around the edges plus if you're wanting some broth for like you or your dogs or something you have plenty of water left over for that so now i put the crock pot on low both of them are on low i do not season them because whenever I eat them, <clears throat> I will season them to match whatever it is I'm wanting to do with them. So that is going to be my lunch and suppers for the upcoming week. That's 10 pounds of 80-20 ground beef. Let me tell you something funny about the internet. I do not have plastic bags in here, okay? And I did that because I know a lot of people are turned off by using plastic. So this time I left them out. However, I will get so many comments about every little thing, people complaining about, well, I would never crock pot my meat. I have to do it in the skillet. Oh, it takes just as long to cook it on the stove as it does on the crock pot. I get so many negative comments and it cracks me up because you cannot, if you have a YouTube channel or you're thinking about getting one, you cannot have a thin skin and have a YouTube channel because somebody will always have something negative to say. People complain because it's too fatty. People complain because it's not fatty enough. People complain that it looked like dog food. People complain that I use plastic. People complain that, well, Terry, you shouldn't do what other people say, so use plastic. It is absolutely hilarious what people, how comfortable people are at telling you what you should and shouldn't do and what they would and wouldn't do. And it's okay because it's the internet. And I just think that's absolutely hilarious about the internet. So if you have a YouTube channel, please know that you will never be able to please everybody. So just watch my comments today or when the, you know, watch my comments because I did not use plastic liners because that's one thing people complain about, but other people complain about using a crock pot instead of using the stove top. So let's watch my comments and see what happens. But comment below if you're, if you're team plastic bag liners or if you're team all natural, no plastic liners. Okay, uh, by the way, I'll come in every hour with this chopper and I'll chop it up and I'll show you that then too. The ground beef in the crock pot, that is my lunch and suppers. And again, those are usually seven ounces and then I mix it with whatever else I want to. My breakfast is has been lately one and a half of these burgers. These are 100% pure ground beef burgers. So I break them apart and these are a full cookie sheet pan. So that's this pan. I line it with foil because they do not fit in my dishwasher very well. And every time I buy these, there will be some that do not have a, uh, a little paper between them. So you, I either will get a knife or I hit them hard enough and they will break apart. But I have never bought any that didn't have at least a couple with there's no paper between the burgers. But if you just hit it a few times, it'll go apart. Now I, like I said, I line these with foil and I do, I sometimes do one, sometimes I do two. This time I did two foils. If I don't need, the two, the two uh, I will just leave the underneath side in there whenever I pull them out. So the, when I do these, I bake them. Listen, I am all about not standing in front of a stove or in, st in front of a skillet for 20, 30 minutes to bake things or to, to fry hamburgers. I'm, I mean, if I'm by, making them for that meal or if I'm making steaks or something like that, then I'm good with it. But that's not that's not the mood I'm in today. So I'm going to, I've got one set up, I'll set up the other one and I'll get right back and I'll show you what we're doing. 
The oven is at 400 degrees. So I'll see you as soon as I get this other one done. Okay, they're all done. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. It's not all the way preheated to 400, but that's all right. I'm not baking a cake. So I'll put the bottom row, top row, and I will check it in 30 minutes, three zero, and then I will flip them and rotate and put them in for another 10 minutes. So I'll be back after 30 minutes. It's been 30 minutes, so I'm gonna pull them out. And I'm gonna turn them over. If you like yours medium or, or like uh, probably medium rare, or well, if you like them rare, this is probably great. Um, but now I go ahead and I flip them on. <clears throat> and then I swap shelves. So these were on the top and now they'll go on the bottom. And now I'll get these flipped. Now I put these in for 10 minutes. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. And I'm gonna let it sit to reabsorb some of that rendered fat. Not all of it, but I'm gonna let it sit till it's cool because when they're done, I am gonna store them in plastic bags. And so this way I'll let them cool reabsorb <coughs> the moisture and then I can pack them up and they won't be too hot to put in plastic bags. So probably about 15, 20 minutes maybe. We'll see, I'll be back. Again, I do not season them because I eat these for breakfast or I may wanna take them somewhere for something. So this way, if they're not seasoned, then I can put what I want to on them the day that I'm about to eat them. Some of the things you can do with these is the, you know, like I said, I use them for breakfast, but if I have an event the next day where, um, you know, I'm gonna go somewhere, I can pull three or four of these out of the freezer and I can have them for lunch or um, whatever I wanna do with them. Typically, I eat one and a half of them for my breakfast. So um, that's usually what I eat for breakfast, but they're still available in the freezer if I need them for something else. I'm gonna line you up so you get a direct shot in here. This is how the ground beef is looking. So every hour, I will come in and I will use this chopper. I don't know what brand mine is. I've had people ask me. It doesn't say. They have, you can get them on Amazon. I They, they have them on Amazon. They have them on Pampered Chef makes one. Um, there's all different kinds of these. It's just, this is how it looks, like a little star. And, um, you just buy a cheap one. Don't spend a bunch of money on one, I don't think, but unless you want to buy an expensive one. But I come in every hour and I chop it up. <clears throat> Why do I do this? Because I don't want to spend a bunch of time over a hot skillet and I need to mass cook my meat. And so if you don't mass cook your meat, then you could definitely do this over a skillet. The texture is more wet. So when I do this for my ground chicken and I want to turn that ground chicken into riced chicken, I will saute that in a skillet after it defrosts. So that's one. Let's come over here to the other one. <clears throat> if you wanna see how I make my carnivore chick, uh, rice, um, just do a search for Terry Lee's Riced Chicken, R-I-C-E-D, chicken, because I use ground chicken and turn it into rice for my meals that I want to have a rice texture without having the carbs of rice. So there we go. I do this one every hour. In the meantime, I can do what I want. I can clean. I can crochet, I can watch TV, I can play video games. So every hour I come in and spend about 10 minutes doing this. Well, less than 10 minutes. 
probably three or four minutes. And now I reset my timer for one hour. And I will be back in one hour. All right, it's been about 20 minutes. Let's bag these up. These are some bags that one of my subscribers, Marie, sent me. They're perfect portion bags. And um, they are, I'm going to put these in these and, and then <clears throat> pop them in the freezer. So first off, I'm going to take, because these make 18 um, uh, if I use one and a half servings. So I need to break eight of them in half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now you can see that they have reabsorbed a lot of that, or well, most of that moisture that was down there. There's just some extra rendered fat and stuff. You could add some water to this and make a roux out of it or whatever you wanted to. So in the meantime, we are going to, I should have opened these bags, but that would make too much sense. Now I'm not going to make you watch this if I have to do that every time. I'm going to take one and a half burgers and I'm going to drop it down into the bag. Let's do another one and then I'll do them all myself off camera so you're not watching me suffer. So another one and a half burgers. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And these are perfectly cooled. They're not hot. They um, So it's going to be fine to put them in this plastic because they're not like going to be melting it or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that and I will be back. Okay, so I've got them portioned out in one and a half burgers. And now I'm just going to plop them in here and I'll toss them into the freezer. And then it makes it easy because every evening I go on and do my prep for the next day at work and I can pull one baggie out and by the time I get to work it is defrosted. So now I've got my perfectly portioned breakfast and I just labeled this Ziploc bag as breakfast burgers. I did not individually package them last time but I think this will be a lot easier this time so I'm going to pop this in the freezer. It's been another hour, so I come in and I chop up my crock pot meat. In the meantime, the burgers are all done and ready, and my gravy's done, and I'm still eating on that. But the benefit of doing this kind of cooking is you have all kinds of free time except for the five minutes you stand in front of the crock pot to chop it up every hour. So... Although maybe if you try, I've never tried it, and I always say I'm going to, but you can always see that not, not, um, Your crock pot timer is done. Ziggy, cancel timer. Your pot Ziggy, timer is done. cancel timer. You can always see if, you know, if leave it alone and see if it cooks it like a meatloaf. I, I always say I'm going to do that, but I never do. So... There you go. I'm going to do the other one, and I'll see you in another hour. Okay, let's take a look. It's been another hour. Something I have found is that leaner meat cooks faster than the fattier meat. So, I, I'm not a science person, but um, leaner meat usually gets done in three to three and a half hours. Beef. I don't know about chicken. I can't remember on chicken, but... But like, look at that, that's that's done. That's done, it's been about a little over three hours. So, I'm gonna chop up this other one. And then we are gonna get it measured out and into portion sizes, so that way I can eat on this throughout the week. And when we're done, we'll save our fat for something else. This is not, I'm, I can't do this without getting in your way, but I'm going to take this crock pot and pour it into here so I can separate the meat from the fat. Let's see if I can, I know I'm going to get in your way, but it's the only way I can do it. Oh, it's heavy, it's heavy, it's heavy. Okay, now 
set it back over here. Y'all know I can't stand a dirty area. Don't like a dirty working area. Okay, hopefully that's not rising up. Nope, so far so good. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to take this ground beef. I'm going to kind of drain out some of that extra fat. Now, please know, I'm not anti-fat. But, right now, where I'm at on my journey, I don't need to add extra fat. So... You can add all the fat you want to your little, to your stuff, but right now I'm doing it without the extra fat. So now I'm going to pour this other one in. Let's try it this way. No, that ain't going to work. I'm going to have to do it this way. It's just so heavy. It's just so heavy. Ow. So heavy. All right, now. Ow. Ow. Steam. Ow! All right, now. There we go. Okay. Now, pull this out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this leftover rendered fat and water, we're gonna let all that be in the refrigerator for us to use later. So I'm going to set this over here for a second. I'm going to add the rest of this ground beef to this other bowl. And then this one can get to soaking. So now that rendered fat and water, I'm going to go ahead and pour into this glass bowl. The way I can see it when it's all cooled off. I'm going to put this bowl into the refrigerator. At this stage, you can do whatever it is you want to do with it. So you can bag it up in one pound things for your family, one pound servings for you. Whatever it is your goals are, whatever it is your needs are, you can just do that at this stage. So right now for me, I'm doing seven ounce servings. So I'm just going to scoop it up until I get seven ounces. And this is a rinky dink spoon, so I need to get a bigger one. So give me just a second. Try to get as close to seven ounces. Sometimes it's seven one, sometimes it's six nine. Well, very rarely is it six nine. I always try to get it into the sevens. So seven. So I'm gonna get these into seven ounce servings and I will be back. I should have said after your meat has cooled down to your preference. So if you want your meat to be room temperature, and, and then put it into whatever serving container you want, that's okay too. So, uh, you know, I know people say don't put it in the plastic when it's hot. So you do your portioning out, whatever your preference is. So, all right, I'm going to finish this up now and I'll show you how much we have when it's done. Well, I'm doing these last cup few. Listen, we all have different nutritional needs. 
So while my seven ounces might work for me and what my goals are, you might need eight ounces, you might need 10 ounces, you might need to add all that fat in there. So please know when you watch people do stuff, you need to gear whatever it is you're doing towards your own personal needs and don't <clears throat> assume that whatever somebody else is doing is gonna be an exact fit for you. Everybody's different and everybody has their own personal needs. When I first, I don't eat the way, when I ended up, I was not eating the same way that I started. So even my own things that I needed changed as I went along. So just remember that, okay? You're not gonna necessarily have the same needs when you start as when you end. <clears throat> and that's gonna be okay. It's okay to have different needs along the way. It's okay to need a lot of fat in the beginning and then less fat later. It's okay. You know, you're a human and your body's gonna do what it wants to do. It doesn't matter what you want your body to do. Your body does what it wants with the nutrition that you put in. So just know that as you watch people, always know that you might have to do something a little bit different and that's gonna be okay if you do. <coughs> that one's too much. I'm not gonna sweat it. It's an extra ounce and I ain't gonna sweat it. So let's see how many I got made today. It honestly varies and I think that's absolutely hilarious. I can do 10 pounds of 80-20 five different times, and I will literally have a different amount each time. All right, let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight days worth of food today. So, yeah. So there you go, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, today it made eight, eight days worth of food. So I mean, let's, let's put it in a better picture. Hang on. And there we have it. People say, well, what do you do with this meat? So I put it in the freezer. I store it in the freezer, and I keep four days out at one time. So I have a lunch and a supper, a lunch and a supper, and a lunch and a supper. And then the rest of it is in the freezer. So, yeah. So let's just say all these are in the freezer. So day one, I eat this and I pull it out. Then I rotate it around. If I drop these, I'm going to be so mad. I rotate it around and put a new one back at that fourth spot. So it's constantly rotating <clears throat> in my refrigerator, so there's always four days out at a time. So slot one, two, three, four. So every time I take one out of slot one, I move two, three, four, and add a new four. And that is how I always keep my food rotating all the time. So now what do I do with it? I have so many people ask that. Now when I was keep carnivore, the things I did with it is a little different than when I'm keto, but when I was carnivore, I would take it and I would add some cheese and maybe like some feta cheese and Greek seasoning. Or I would take some cheddar cheese and some salt and pepper and garlic salt and garlic pepper and make it like a kind of like a burger flavor. Um, when it, I would take um, Italian seasoning and Italian cheese. Um, you could make a uh, a crust out of just eggs like I know that they have all different kinds of crusts out there I usually just made mine with eggs and it was just fine for a pizza and then I put this on top of it and with some Italian seasonings and I ate a, a you know a carnivore pizza there's so many things that you can do with this um, add uh, Indian seasonings you can add um, <clears throat> Asian seasonings you can add anything you want to these it is a blank slate by me not putting any seasoning on it while it's cooking. So now it's into the freezer and um, and it's ready. So that is my, this is my lunch and supper, lunch and supper. So each stack is two days worth right here. So that is, that's how I do my meal prep for my carnivore meat portion of my meal prep. 
I'm gonna get back with you guys when the fat and broth has cooled in the refrigerator so where I can separate them out and do different things with them. And I will show you that whenever we're all done or whenever that's all cooled down and ready to go. Now we come to the stage of deciding what we're gonna do with the rendered fat. Now, we all have our own needs for how we wanna use it. Some of us wanna use it for ourselves. Some of us want to use it for our dogs. And whatever way you want to use it is just wonderful. But I need to pull, I'm going to pull it up. And I'm going to scrape all that off. That's all that gelatin. I bet you could flavor that and have yourself some gelatin. But anyway, you take that and you have a nice broth. But before I go any further, I need to get out a cookie sheet. I have my oven heating up to 350. Because I melt this back down. Now, some people, uh, Nona Grace takes her fat. This, this right here, she will take this and put that into, into small pieces. And then she will use that for... Um, She'll use this like when she cooks her, her eggs. Like, you know, if she doesn't happen to have any bacon grease, you can use this to make eggs. Um, you know, you can just cook in this right here. You can just take this and cut you off. I've watched her. She'll, she takes, after she's done, she'll chop it up into, into little blocks and she freezes them. And then that way, whenever she's ready to cook, she takes a chunk and melts it down into a skillet. Now, personally, for me and my lifestyle, um, I have so much tallow in my freezer that it's actually should be a crime because I got a lot of uh, free uh, suet from some local people that were buying cattle uh, or cows that were already processed. So I melt it down and I'll make fat bombs out of this for the dogs. So... Um, so I've got my oven at 350 and then we're going to put this in the oven and I'll show you how it looks after it is melted. Now, this right here, I'm going to put scoop by scoop into this jar and then you can use this in anything. You can use this in soups. You can use this in uh, whatever your little heart desires. But uh, the fat is separated from it. So... Uh, and probably what I will do is give this, see if mom needs any. I have tons of broth in my freezer right, right now. There's something that fell down if one of y'all want to get it. Um, I have a bunch of broth in my freezer right now. So I really don't need any more. I could just keep it and scoop it, scoop it out and give bites to the dogs. Because that's actually, after it's frozen, it stays in this gelatinous form, which I find interesting. But um, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to put a lid on this and I'm going to label it and I'll just call it broth um, clean. I'll put the word clean on there so that way I know that it's not, um, you know, I could give it to the dogs. There's no onions or anything like that. The rest of this right here, I'm just going to give each dog a couple bites and um, yeah, I'll show you when the fat's melted. Y'all, I lied to you. It wasn't in the freezer. It was in the refrigerator. So um, I left the lid not screwed in all the way, and now it's in the freezer. So now when it solidifies or when it freezes up, then I'll tighten the lid in. I don't know what I was thinking. So, yeah. But anyway, it was just in the refrigerator. So now it's in the freezer, in the jar, not screwed all the way down. And when it freezes solid, then I'll screw the lid back on. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to do was melt it. You're not trying to cook it. You don't have to leave it in for a long time. I think it was only in there like five minutes. And um, you can see the meat chunks in there. So now <clears throat> I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator and let it solidify. Um, a lot of times I put it straight into the freezer, which that's kind of dumb. If, <coughs> if I would put it in the refrigerator first and let it solidify, then I'll be able to chop it up and put it in the freezer. So that's the method I'm using today. Hang on. Okay, so there it's going to sit. And oh, wait a minute. Let me get away from this can. I want something to blow up. So there it's going to sit until it hardens. And from there, I will chop it up 
and put it into bite-sized pieces and they will look like this. See that white right there? That's what it will look like. In the past, I have left the, the dark stuff attached and it makes it real gummy, but it really does better if I can separate like I did tonight, if I can separate the brown broth from the white fat. So anyway, so that's what I do with mine. I will let it separate, uh, or I separated it, and then I'm gonna turn it into just little pieces of, of white fat, and I'll do something like this. Or something like this, hey, easy baby shark. So that's what I do with it, and they are just happy with that decision. So these have been sitting in my refrigerator. I wonder if I can pop it out. Hang on, let's see what happens. Is this big enough? Yeah, that's big enough. I wonder if I can pop it out. Let's just find out. Ha! Look at there. There's just a couple little pieces. There we go. go and then I'll hold this and uh, off and I'll I'll let the dogs lick that clean now hang on you gotta get a container and so now I'll put them into these are really thin looks like so I'll put these into bite-sized pieces now I could kind of roll them inward roll them inward Probably gonna need a couple of these. And like I said, now you can use these however you want to. And you didn't even have to take this extra step to make them thin. If you're gonna be cooking with them, you know, you can leave them in bigger chunks like they were in the beginning. This is just how it fits for me. So there you go. I popped these in the freezer and uh, free dog treats. Y'all have seen how I use them. And there we go. Free dog treats, free person fat bombs. There you go. That is the end of how I do my carnivore meal preps. Um, every, well, this all this meat will last me for one full week of lunch and suppers, but breakfast will last me two weeks. So I'll just have to make the next week of, of lunch and suppers. But these fat bombs, they'll last however long they need to. Okay, bye.